Now for a message from our sponsor, Wells Fargo. Please welcome Bill Daly, Vice Chairman of Public Affairs for Wells Fargo, our former Secretary of Commerce as well. He's in conversation with Brian Agret, President and CEO of City First Bank. Bill, over to you. Thanks very much, Steve, for that kind introduction. So why don't we kind of get right into this? Brian, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the merger of uh, City First and Broadway uh, and all the opportunities that presents to you now as the largest uh, black MDI in America. And it's a great opportunity for your customers and for your, your shareholders. So uh, we really wish you well. A lot of capital has come into minority deposit institutions over the last 10 months or so. Why don't you give us uh, uh, some insight into how you view using that, obviously, again, as the largest uh, MDI in the African-American community nationally. Yeah, first of all, thank you uh, for having me. And I also want to thank uh, you, Bill, and Wells for really what's been a longstanding partnership with uh, City First that's, uh, that's continued and increased uh, with the topics we're talking about today. So first and foremost, uh, uh, the merger itself uh, was a significant increase in capacity and scale for our communities uh, by, by putting these two institutions together. Uh, and job one is getting it right, getting the foundation laid, uh, which includes investment in IT and human capital and customer facing uh, opportunities. Uh, and then, uh, as you mentioned, we also, like many in the space, um, close the merger concurrent with the capital raise. So, so to your question, uh, what are you doing uh, as it relates not just to um, standing up the infrastructure and the capacity, but also um, uh, really investing that capital? And so we're we're really focused uh, at City First and always have been on ways in which we are closing. Uh, the racial and uh, the economic, uh, uh, the racial wealth gap uh, and, and the economic gap uh, um, uh, for, uh, for minority communities. And we focus as a commercial lender really on three key areas. The first being focused on the affordable housing segment where we, where we are particularly interested in minority entrepreneurs and developers to be for-profit or not or non-profit again getting the wealth plus uh the housing segment secondly focused on non-profit finance we do a lot of work with nonprofits that are supporting low and moderate income communities uh, and minority communities and then the last one and perhaps the one you might be most interested in really we also focus uh, significantly on small business finance where our interest is in minority entrepreneurs uh, and low and moderate income communities where really wealth along with uh, uh, small business and housing clearly being the two areas where we see wealth created and thus the ability to close the, the wealth gap. So just thinking about this a little bit from Wells Fargo's perspective, particularly with uh, what I'll call the uh, increased awareness and awakening that we've seen over the last year and the urgency that's come with that. How is Wells thinking about and addressing uh, the same issue, the racial wealth gap? Look, there, there's no doubt that, as you know, uh, because of not only the business you've run, but, but the fact that uh, we've seen in America, as you mentioned, the, the awakening around this divide and the pandemic let's be honest, has really highlighted uh, the challenges in the African-American, Hispanic community, communities of color, and the disparity, not only with the health crisis, but with the economic crisis. So we've taken a serious look and starting with our MDI decision, which quite frankly, the decision to invest in, in MDIs was made before the George Floyd murder and the sort of reaction uh, after that. Because I think there's a real growing sense amongst institutions in the financial service industry, which let's be honest, the history of the financial service industry, banks specifically, with communities of color, is not anything that people should be proud about historically. But I think there's a, a, there is a realization, not only of an opportunity, it's not something about just a charitable thing by any stretch, the opportunity that's there, and if the economic gap can be closed and you can begin to see strengthening in, in some of these communities that have been challenged, then those of us who are in those communities and trying to help will do better ourselves. So, so it's to, to a degree, 
there's a, a awareness of a change, but also an opportunity for us. And not only with the MDIs, we've, we've put together an initiative, a 10 year initiative on the unbanked and trying to find ways with products. So let me, let me come back, Brian, to you. And I, you, you laid out in a very eloquent way how the MDIs and, and what you plan to do with the capital, um, increased capital that you all have have uh, received you and, and other MDIs from a series, including us, which we're very proud of. But um, exactly how do you think, or what changes have to happen in communities as we move forward? And, and, and how do we accomplish that together? Uh, big companies, mid-sized companies, small, small businesses. Yeah, absolutely. And first, I appreciate the, the what you laid out about Wells Fargo's approach. And I, I, I absolutely believe that CDFIs and MDIs are absolutely part of the solution because it is a distribution system, but trusted, um, uh, embedded. Uh, you have leadership that understands the underlying communities. And so thus, partnerships, as you have suggested and as you are doing strongly with CDFIs and MDIs really has to be part of the solution. The other part you touched on as well, and that's recognizing that doing the things that the same ways we've done them in the past, either by omission, uh, uh, ignoring, or perhaps not, not understanding or focusing on these communities uh, and, and the intermediaries and the products they need really is not going to work. The problem is is uh, is too vast the, 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 and requires really too much uh, collaboration and partnership and capital, quite frankly, uh, for us to uh, to solve this. I think what's important to recognize is that CDFIs and MDIs, this is what we do every day. This is These are the communities we focus on. And so there really is, again, a, a unique distribution point intent focus discipline uh, and and it can be looked at um, with the same uh, history of track record that you look at any other business how well have you served the, the community and how well have you grown your business and service so i think the bottom line here is we all recognize that this has to be done i always say it's got to be deep and long in partnership and capital uh, with an intent of really knowing that we're not going to solve this tomorrow but if we're really intent and and, and focused on long-term partnerships uh, we can begin to chip away and really make a difference, do more than chip away, really make real change. Really, when we think about Wells again um, and, and small business, which we talked about earlier, um, what, given a perspective of a more inclusive um, recovery, how are you leveraging uh, your small business resources? You mentioned you're the largest uh, of the small business uh, lenders in the country. So I'm very interested in how Wells is looking at that powerful resource. In addition to being an incredibly important part of our um, uh, enterprise, what, what Charlie decided to do, Charlie Sharp, when the PPP program was put together, and, and out of that, eight, over 80% of the people who are our customers who we helped through that process were, were um, small businesses of people of color, headed by people of color primarily black, Hispanic. Uh, there are also 80 plus percent were 10 employees or less. So these were really small businesses in need. Charlie decided he would take, he, he wanted to take our gross PPP fees, which ended up to be about $420 million and, and give those to help support small businesses who were in such need from everything with trying to save their employees, pay their insurance, keep their doors open, or at least even if they close them to pay the bills so they could reopen at a certain point. So we gave, we worked with CDFIs to quickly get out of over 305 million in the first year we had another 50 million we took um or 305 million we took 50 million and worked with not-for-profit organizations to help work with individuals to get them ready as small business leaders to, to address the issues of financial literacy and some of their financial concerns in advising them. And now we're in the final throes of, of coming up with a plan to give away the last $100 million, again, to organizations that would work with small businesses. One of the things we've noticed is small businesses right now need assets. They need to 
the small things, whether it's a new pizza oven in the pizza parlor or a new heating facility. So we're in the process of giving away that final hundred million dollars and it makes us very proud of that. So I know we're running out of time. I want to thank you, Brian. I want to thank you for your leadership and let's all keep pulling together to make sure that the economic recovery comes uh, throughout this nation and not just in certain parts. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you as well, Bill. Thank you, Bill Daly and Brian Argret. Bill, you could be, you could take my seat here. You're a really great interviewer. That brings us to the end of our program. A big thank you to Wells Fargo for its support and to all of you attendees for joining us for this discussion. For any of you who missed the conversations, we're going to have the video from the event up on our website shortly. Have a great day. I'm Steve Clements. Be well.